Bow Staff Follow Along Basic Lesson, we're going over all the basic movement that you need to do in order to strengthen your hands, your wrists, get familiar with your bow, learn how to spin, learn how to strike, do some tricks, everything we can think of in this basic class just to get you familiar with the staff so you feel more confident when you use it. I want you to warm up with the staff in one hand. You're gonna twist going one way and then the other way is for about 30 seconds. This is gonna to start to increase the flexibility in your wrists. Good morning. It's gonna give you a little bit more strength, speed, power. It's also gonna keep your joints safe from injury because the blood gets in there, the plasma gets in there, starts to lubricate the joint. After about 30 seconds here, go to the other hand. Same thing. Good morning, Vic. Side to side, twisting. Going over a couple new moves in this workout. Awesome, I'll be waiting, I'll be looking for it. It's good to see everybody today. Once you do this for another 30 seconds on this hand, start to go from one hand into the other hand. I've been experimenting, I have some students here in person now, and I put this video on, or these videos on, and they follow along just as well as if I'm teaching the class in person. So I'm starting to see it from the other side. It encourages me to make more of these. I've got to get past this basic level first. Good morning, Texas. Hope it's nice and hot there as it's nice and hot here. After you've gone from side to side, Put it in the left hand first, turn it all the way up so the pinky's up, the right hand comes over the top, thumb down. You're gonna turn, the left wrist is gonna stay there. It's gonna take it under. When it turns back up, this hand grabs it. Almost grabbed it too soon there. I like to also slide this hand down as it comes around and push it. And that's gonna increase the speed a little bit it's also going to get my hands more familiar with taking the staff on that pass or that transfer. Start to speed it up a little bit. Try to keep the elbows in. You do that move. It's a little heavier staff today, so it's nice. It's challenging. This is a challenging spin with this staff I'm not used to using for this spin. I want you to do that if you can. If you can make it more difficult for yourself, do that every once in a while. Start to build more confidence. Get out of your comfort zone. Bring that to a stop. Just push it down and then go back the other way. Right hand, the pinky side comes up, left hand slides down, takes it. Yeah. The heavier bow definitely makes a big difference. This one's heavier and it's got that, that bigger diameter. So it's an inch and a half starts to not only it's like if you've ever lifted weights and you go in and they have a strong man weight in there like a barbell or a dumbbell they're always bigger that makes it a lot harder to hold on to but harder means stronger yeah this one's a lot thicker and you can even play around if you have a broomstick still start to put some tape on it the tape if you wrap it around Enough starts to increase the diameter, adds a little bit of weight. So you can do the same thing if you're still using a broomstick or a painter's pole or something like that. And then watch yourself. I'm, I'm watching myself here with you and I see that my elbows are popping out. See how much I'm popping that out? That's making it a little easier for me. So then I wanna think, okay, I need to control that elbow Keep it closer to the body. Don't let it pop out. Don't let it rise like that. Keep the stress, the tension on that forearm so I can build the strength. All right, so we're moving on into this figure eight spin. I'll show you a little closer. That's a sideways figure eight. Just carve one side here and I go back. And that loop and that loop is also the infinity sign. So we call this the endless spin. And it's in front of my body. In my left hand, my left foot's forward facing you. 
slow it down a little bit and then speed it up. Just noticed all the colorful balls in the background. That's from our drumming program. It's a big cardio thing. It's a lot of fun. Let me show you guys how to do that one day. Bring that into the front of the body and the back. Now this is the exact same figure eight you just did, but now it pushes all that pressure, all that tension into the joint in a good way so that I can now start to strengthen my arm, my shoulder out here to the side. Just put about 30 seconds in that one, bring it to the other hand. That foot goes forward. I'm going to the front and the front of my body and the back of my body over here. Right foot forward, it's in the right hand. And again, I'm just carving that sideways figure eight. Also think of striking, right? If you had a knife or machete or short sword, or if you had a, a collie stick or an extrema stick, it's that slicing downward motion in this forward rotation, forward spin. So you're disguising repetition here. This is how you get so much better at martial arts by cross training with this wooden staff, this big, long, Koreans call it jangbong in uh, the Okinawan language, call it the bow or the Japanese language, the bow. Other uh, martial arts, the Kung Fu guys, I think they call these the gun, the bang, just means big stick. They all mean about the same. India has the silam bomb. Bring it to the front and the back. Uh, you could. I, I don't think it's, it's as necessary. Um, with the, are you asking about the spin striking, Vic? Or are you talking about striking with the traditional uh, basic strikes, either with the hands here or the strikes here? In that case, yes. Yeah, you can do that. Just, you know, I mean, use common sense, obviously. If it's a city park <laughs> tree and you're going to be knocking the bark off or breaking it down, then you're going to get yourself in trouble. But if it's your tree and you're going to do uh, a little bit of wear and tear, but not too much damage, I think that's fine. I've done that many times. It's not like you're going to chop a tree down to the ground with your wooden staff. At, at the most, you just bruise the tree and then it grows stronger, right? Just like you bruise your arms. So let's go to the uh, this strike. I want you to learn how to do both palms out first, like you're doing push-ups. You're gonna punch, just like you would punch straight in to the face, right to the center of the face, right? But because the staff is in your hand, it's gonna come here to the temple. You're gonna strike here and strike here. And when you do this strike, I want you to have one foot forward. Um, let me take this down just a little bit, hold on kick out the stand. So left foot forward, I'm gonna to punch to the left, right, left, right, and then I want you to switch feet. Right foot forward, punch, left, right. So you have one foot forward and you're in this longer stance, right? Back leg locked, front knee bent, facing your opponent or the attack. And just strike, strike, strike. Make sure it comes to a stop. Don't, don't just do this. Make sure there's a little bit of a stop, stop, and then do that same strike to the knee. One, two, one. And when I bring it in, I'm stopping it, protecting this joint right here, but I'm stopping it over the forearm, whether I'm striking down or striking up. It's the same thing. You can also strike the middle, strike to the knee. Make sure there's and it, it, you can bring it together like I am, but make sure there's just a momentary stop. Make sure it comes to it. That's about uh, following through, right? And when you strike, don't stop it over here. Bring it through, bring it through, so that you get in the habit or the practice of pushing through, striking through, hitting and going through, moving through your target. For self-defense, you want to destroy or remove the target. If you're out here, you're missing. If you stop right here, right next to them, you're hitting them slightly, I want you to go through, through, full contact. Then change your hand position, and let's go into the second type of a strike. 
so that you're coming down first at this angle, pushing in. Now this is still stopping over here. And you'll see some people will do this uh, figure four. Don't, I, I don't do that one. I mean, you can if you want. I'm not saying you can't. It's just that I want you to understand that this is not this. This is one very direct, very powerful angular strike coming either temple, clavicle, the arm. They've got something in their hand, smashing it out of the way. You do that down to the ground toward the knee, the leg. But it's that angle, that first angle strike. Then from here, walk your hands into the other position. Now notice I said walk. I want you to roll them on your staff and not take them off and put them back on. This is bad habit, right? Get out of this bad habit from the start by walking or rolling your hands in the other position. Put that other foot forward. Strike down. Do all these angles first. Coming down to the head or the temple, the shoulder, the ribs, that waist, and then down into the leg, into the knee. But practice. And then here, Vic, is where you use the tree. Or I like to take, if you have a tree and a limb, take a tennis ball, uh, drill a hole through it or cut a hole through it. You can use a, like a 10 penny nails, what I always did. Put it through, put the strength through it, tie a big fat knot on the other end so it can't come out. Tie that from above. And then all of a sudden you have something to hit. Now obviously that's a lot bigger than a tennis ball, but a tennis ball is great because when you hit it and you practice your strikes, you can practice your accuracy and you can start to hit a moving target. So this is what I don't want you to do. When you hit it, don't stop it. Bring it all the way back. Let it move and then time yourself. Hit it again, hit it again. Hit it this way, hit it this way. Start here, hit it this way. Bring it down on top, change your hand position. Walk your hands and hit it over and over again. And that's how you get much better at accurately striking your target. It's kind of like freestyle for striking. We're gonna go back up. There we go, just a little bit. But it's like freestyle for striking. Practicing, and then throw in, boom, that hand roll or the wrist roll. Get it in that other position while it's still spinning or swinging in the air and you're gonna get a lot better. So again, just tennis ball, tin penny nail, pop it through, or if you want, take a, just be careful, because when you, I cut myself with uh, tennis balls, because it's a hard rubber, but you just get a good firm grip, put a little knife, and a little knife on the other one, and then just that cheap string, like cheap white twine that you would get from the pharmacy even. They, like in a pharmacy, they always have that one aisle with like house, uh, things to help like fix your car, fix your house or whatever, like cheap little nails, cheap little hammers, get something like that. But they always have a little twine there. You get that, you push it through, tie it really tight, tie it from the ceiling like those bags are, or tie it from that tree branch so that it swings. If you don't have a, um, a tennis ball, get a sock, an old sock, or it could be a new sock, I don't know, get a sock, a thick sock, like an athletic sock, and then you shove a bunch of stuff in there. Uh, if you put rocks in it, it's gonna break off. It's gonna rip open your sock. But try to put in some, uh, I don't know, smaller rocks or put the rocks in the middle and inside another sock and then put, some, put that inside double sock. You've got two socks. Put them together, but then tie the sock. So now it's maybe a little bit longer and it's a little bit, and it doesn't have to be super heavy. Just have, have a little weight. That's why a tennis ball is so great because it has a little bit of weight. And then you practice striking Changing hand positions, change hand positions this way, practice striking this way, change that hand, go into this kind of striking, go down over the top, and then if you want, try a two-handed spin and see if you can hit it with a two-handed spin, and then come back into, and like I said, it's freestyle for striking, similar to spinning for freestyle, which is what we're gonna talk about now. Now I wanna go into a wrist roll. Oh, wait a minute. I skipped, I'm sorry, I skipped ahead. I want you to learn how to do that figure eight coming backward. Let me grab, since I'm here, 
the Kali stick. Remember I said like a machete or short, short sword? This is striking down hard, fast, getting power to defend yourself. That's the same as this forward spin. When you change that angle, and now you're bringing it up and bringing it up, right? Hitting from the bottom to the top, bottom to the top. That's the second one, the one you're gonna do now. You're gonna pull your figure eight. I'll start with my right foot, put your right foot in the front, pulling that small side of the hand, but visualize in your head. This is what becomes so important. This is what makes it martial arts and not just any other activity. Visualize, you're defending yourself with these upward strikes, these deflecting blocks coming up this way. That's a good way too, if you get your hand like really tight, someone's coming in, just bring it straight up on the side of his jaw, bam, real quick. And guess what? Because you're using this heavy staff, your hands, your arms, your shoulders are gonna be lightning fast. You're gonna have a lot of speed and power. When you challenge yourself and get out of your comfort zone, that is. So push yourself, this reverse spin, pulling up for self-defense. I don't know if I said that or not, but you know what I mean. Not going around looking for a fight, being able to speak up and say, hey, you don't have to like me, but you gotta get out of my face. You don't have to like me, but you can't call me that. You have to like me. You don't have to like who I am or what I am or what I stand for, or what I believe, but you can't touch me. But you're, you're free to not like me and, and get okay with that. Not everybody's supposed to like you in life which is liberating if you think about it, because that means you don't have to like everybody else. I'm not saying be a, be a hermit and an old grump. I'm just saying understand there's a reason for everything, but don't get stuck. So you're going now to the front and the back of your body, pulling. Don't get stuck emotionally, get strong emotionally. Martial arts is designed to strengthen your body and mind with that mind part. This is something I was thinking about yesterday. Left hand pulling. Everyone says that uh, self-defense is 90% what? Someone say it. Tell me what, so how do you finish that, right? You guys have all heard this. We've all heard it. Some of us have even said it. Self-defense is 90% mental. No, it's not. <laughs> it's 90% this. It's 90% this big stick. It's this much mental. Uh, ask me that again. So you go slow, slow. The idea is the mental part. Most people, get, the reason I don't like that so much is because people will spend all their time on theory and idea and learning. And they've learned all the words. And they know that bow staff means staff, staff. And then someone says bow staff and they're like, that's not right, that's not, it's, it's, you're saying staff, staff, man. Come on, learn some language. Come on, man. And I've been hearing that a lot lately. I think that's a funny, funny, funny thing. Anyway, the point is, it's not 90% mental. It's uh, flexibility, endurance, strength, balance, and those things you are responsible for every day. Get up in the morning, slow squats, stretch, slow squats, get the, the blood moving, maybe jog in place, real super light for five minutes. Or if you have a bike, use your bike, right? Five minutes and then stretch. Then pick up your staff and practice. Practice to the front, practice to the side and the back, and develop your strength, speed, flexibility, endurance, your well being, your physical well being. And then mentally, you only need a couple things. Uh, self defense is situational awareness, number one. Number two, get in a better position. Those are both mental but they also have an action, right? Number three, hit them. Full commitment. Where are your targets? So you have to understand that self-defense is 10% mental and 90%. And we know what they mean. They're trying to emphasize the idea that you have to have the right mindset. But people today, especially, are stuck with this idea of mindset. And um, yeah, Kung Fu is gonna be more of this grip. There's a Kung Fu strike. There's a Kung Fu spin. So take two hands on it. I was gonna do this one today anyway. Two-handed spin, palms facing out, like you're doing push-ups. Feet just under your body. Go down, bring it around, and up on the other side. This is my right hand. My right hand strikes on top of your head. Boom, that's a strike. 
go down, and then my right hand is in front. That's going to clear the strike that's coming to my leg. That's going to push it out of the way. That's a clear, and I'm going to come up, strike down with the right hand still. So that's three techniques with the right hand, and then I'm going to go three with the left. This is Kung Fu. Kung Fu two-handed spin. This is also what Darth Maul does, by the way. This is one of the spins that Ray Park does when he plays Darth Maul in the Star Wars movie. For those of you that care or that want to learn it, um, but learn it because it's something different anyway. All right, so up here, I strike with the left, I clear with the left, I strike down with the left. See that strike? That's the strike. So the first strike is here, and then I block across, or I can strike here, and then I strike again with that left. That's three with the left. So strike, clear, strike, strike, clear, strike. And then what it really is, is just spinning from side to side, and my hands stay closed around the staff. Now you'll see some people do this, and they do this. You won't see people who've ever hit another staff or did the combat competition or whatever. They don't do that. You're not gonna do that because if you open your hand, one, that makes you, puts all that stress on your thumb. Your thumb's not that strong. So you want to use your hand, keep it tight, and increase flexibility with your hand closed. This is cheating, this, this makes it easy. Remember, I said at the beginning, I like when it's more difficult, because that means I'm growing. So one, two, one, two. Now the other way to do that two-handed spin is when your hands are facing each other. And now, this is when this is gonna come into play. This hand rolling, or hand walking, or switching, whatever you wanna call it, and it's gonna happen when I spin here. See my hand, I was here, thumb up. I'm getting ready to go, thumb down. This hand's gonna have to switch. This hand is gonna switch. This hand's gonna, but notice that my hands are staying on. And again, you're gonna see some people will do this and they'll, they'll even kinda, I'm trying to I'm having a hard time even cheating and, and making it happen, but they'll take their hand off and then they'll, they'll throw it. Now that's not, that's not the same as when you go under and you twist and you go under and you twist and you go under. That's a little bit different technique because there's usually a push assist with the other hand, pushing and pushing. You see that, pushing that, and then it goes under here, and then I bring it kind of around, uh, folding across my body. Don't worry about that one yet. First, get this two-handed spin, the Kung Fu Chinese style, right? Now, if you take your hand here, and you do it in this position, you're going to have to start switching your hands. But I want to show you the third way, which is Salam Bam. The Indian style, palm. Yeah, I'm gonna show you that one. You're gonna get that one on the next level. After we get past freestyle, we're gonna go back into some new techniques. So the next time we do freestyle, you get more, um, more techniques to use in your freestyle or your flow. See my hands together? Now this is super effective. Think of uh, the purpose of this, this, the length of this staff, right? For self-defense. Let's say the thread is here. I put the staff between me and the threat simply by pointing my thumb at the threat. I point my thumb. Now, the th threat has to get around the length of my staff. He or she or it or whatever has to get around that length. I also am able to strike out there. If they have a knife, and it's a knife that can go in and, and lacerate your, your internal organs and pierce your heart and your lungs and you die, and you don't want to block it with your, your flesh and bone, maybe lose a couple fingers, maybe get cut in the thigh or the arm and bleed out that way. Now you have this stick, so you have this distance for self-defense. See what I mean? They have that, <laughs> that uh, knife in their hand. I, I'm, going for, I'm going for them, wherever I can hit them as hard as fast as I can. Uh, self-defense technique or principle, I'm looking for targets, eyes, nose, whatever can I remove or destroy for self-defense. Their ability to breathe temporarily, permanently, their ability to see me or hear me, uh, their ability to run after me, their ability to touch me or stab me with that knife. I'm trying to destroy it every single strike. But back to the Silam Bomb, 
you can do the spin in the center of the staff, which is the way that we normally do things with the bow or the Joe or the Zhang Bong, um, whatever we want to call it, the long staff. But with the Silam Bong, you can then also create that distance. And I have to be careful, I don't smash the ceiling tiles. But I'm not always going to do it in the center. Sometime you can do it in the last third of the staff, as long as it clears your body. And now you've increased the uh, leverage, you've created a levered weight, and so you're getting stronger in your grip. So maybe sometime today when you're working out, try that. Put your hands here when you're outside or you have a high ceiling, and just see how that, especially if you have the heavier staff, whoop, just hit the ceiling. Just uh, see how that puts extra tension and pressure and really fires those forearms. So you can get big, strong, powerful forearms because self-defense is 90% forearm and 10% mental. And that's mostly a joke, but you know what I mean. All right, let's go into the wrist roll. Wrist roll. Yeah, and this wrist roll to wrist roll is definitely a forearm workout, right, Vic? Vic will tell you he's been doing this every day. And he's seen big changes. A lot of you have been doing this every day and you've seen big changes. Let me know in the comment section below if that's true. Where, where have your biggest changes been? So I'm going here to here. Yeah, I know you have. I, you haven't even told me and I know you have. I know you have because I have. And even though I've been doing this for 40 years plus, I'm still seeing changes. And think about that. I want well-being into my later years. I want well-being for as long as I can have it. Physical well-being, which is, again, for me, strength, flexibility, endurance, at least those three things, those will lead to more physical well-being and mental well-being. And that's only going to come, yeah, total less, less uh, shoulder pain. My shoulders feel amazing, and they didn't for years, especially when I was in the military. I did a lot of stupid things with my shoulders and I really paid for that over the years. Plus, as a kid growing up, part of it's doing push-ups wrong. I've learned how to do the push-ups right since then. But I attribute almost all of this to the plasma, the blood that got in there. So I'm spinning these every single day, starting slowly and then gradually. And I'm not a doctor. This isn't medical advice. I'm just telling you what it did for me. Strengthen the shoulders, but it also heals, takes away the pain. How did that happen? So I go from side... And I've been told by many doctors, you're going to have to have surgery on there. You have torn rotator cuffs. And then they do the MRI for like $1,500 to $2,500. And then uh, I've never had to do that. Awesome. So you're just going side to side. What it is is you open the hand and you let it balance on the back. And then you turn your hand and you take it with the small side. Then you go back to the small side, let it balance, and bring it back through. 30 seconds to the right, 30 seconds on the left. And then I want you to go back into your figure eight and I want you to add that spin on both sides of your body. And I know some of you are doing this already and you're really good at this. So I want you to level up today. I want you to progress by going to the front and the back of the body. So this is that same exact figure eight or I'll oh, just open my hand there. Infinity spin, endless spin the front and the back, and this time, wrist roll to wrist roll. When it's behind you, it's going over this pinky side. When it's in front of you, it's going over the thumb side. So see that? And I'll try to do that without killing anybody here, smacking the camera, back of the hand, front of the hand, and then same thing in the other hand. Front and back of the body, and you're gonna go wrist roll, wrist roll, front of the hand, Back of the hand, front, back. And then reverse your spin. Remember I said this is like that slicing up motion, slicing up. So go into that reverse spin and then the wrist rolls happen on the opposite side. So now it's pinky over here, thumb over here, or small side of the hand, big side of the hand. And then just like before, here's your level up, here's your progression, here's where you see or separate, right? The beginners from intermediate, from here. And that's not a, that doesn't mean don't try it. <laughs> try it, maybe you can get it from the start. 
Some things click for me that don't click for others. Some things click for others that don't click for me. You just keep it going. Me too. It's, it's endless, right? Not just an endless spin. Oh, we're doing the reverse. But endless things, benefits, endless ways you can move it. And, move, and come up with your own signature, signature move. All right. When you have a watch on, it's going to run out of the watch every once in a while. I just don't want to take it off today. So from here, I keep taking it off and leaving it places. So I'm trying not to take it off. All right. So from here to here, you have a watch. Either take it off or adjust your spin. Then go into your freestyle. We've talked many times about freestyle. Freestyle is just when you weave together different moves or you paste them together, or cut them, however you want to think about it. Start with a forward spin. I'm going to make this the front forward spin. And then try today when you do your freestyle without moving your feet, bring your hand across your body into the reverse spin on the other side of your body. So try that. Try forward, reverse, forward, reverse. And the staff needs time to do what it needs to do, but you'll increase the speed of the spin through your core. And this is becoming a core workout for you now where you're really firing those muscles and it's improving. What were they again for well-being as you get older or at any age? Flexibility, endurance, strength. From here, here, and then the other hand. Forward spin. And so what happens when I bring the hand across the body, it forces it into the reverse which is the same thing as if I were just turning around. Now I'm in the reverse. And when I turn around again, now I'm forward. So with one hand, spin here, bring it to the other side with that same hand. And then again, without moving your feet, I want you to go forward with the right, bring it to the left into the reverse. Bring it back to the right, but watch how I have to change hands. That butterfly spin. From here, when I bring it forward into the other hand, it's just that basic pass. From here, when I bring it back over, I have to go over the top. So reverse, forward, reverse, forward. Then change positions and go into the forward. Again, feet don't move. Forward, reverse, I have to go over the top, forward, Reverse, reverse spin into a forward spin. And if you hit your knee and it falls to the ground, pick it up, right? That's it. There's no mystery there. Um, and if you want to get like real fancy and you roll it to the top of your foot and you pop it. Did you guys see that? But most of you guys probably know how to do that from the first day, right? Falls to the ground. You're going to roll it back. Top of the foot. Top of the foot. Just lift your knee. You pop it up. That's a freebie. That's an extra one. All right, final exercise for today. And I want to make sure this, I might just tilt it down so you can see it. Hold on. All right. Okay. It's a mobility device. Helps you get down and get up. Now, in the right hand, you're going to sit back like this. Now, you might not be able to sit back like that yet. Don't sit crisscross with the legs that collapses your lower back. It's the worst way to sit. The, what they used to call Indian style, the little kitty teacher called crisscross Indian sauce or what, I don't, whatever it's called. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. But sit like this. If you need to, push up a little bit. But get used to this. This is going to open the knees. This is going to get the blood flowing as long as your feet are here and not out to the side. You can't even do that. Just keep your feet under your bum and stretch out your legs a little bit. Get used to this. Like I said, if you need to, come up a little bit. If you really need to, sit in a chair, but hold your hand out, or you can do the standing. You can do, I forgot to say that. You can do the standing if you're outside. I can't do the standing because of the ceiling height. So I hold it all the way, just holding it at the end. I'm gonna pull it all the way up and down. Show you a close up. I think you get it. I'm really now starting to build strength in my hand, my wrist, my shoulders, my grip, my elbows. And I will just want to try to keep that all straight. I'm going to do that for about 30 seconds, just pulling it straight up. And then I'm going to go forward and back. So 
front and back. I'm going to do that for 30 seconds. And then before I switch to the other hand, I'm going to pull it into my hand. So from here, you're flicking your wrist and it comes flying at your face. So from here, pull it and get used to catching it in the air. From here, pull it. And that motion, that pulling up motion, that's a real strong uh, jujitsu or uh, judo, um, hapkido, all the grappling moves. That twisting, twisting motion, small circle jujitsu. So that's really gonna help you with your other martial arts. After you've done it with one hand, put it in the other hand, same thing. First coming forward, and it's 30 seconds. And if you need to, it's okay to choke up. Take some of the weight off of it. Again, it's like a big, not really a levered weight, but kind of like that, right? And then forward, and all the way to the back. And then finally, pulling, flicking it toward your face. And if you can, try to catch it as far to the bottom as possible, and that'll really build strength, power, and the forearms give you all the things that you're looking for, for well-being, strength, flexibility, endurance. There's one more, but I can't think of it. Anyway, it doesn't matter. You know what I'm talking about. But remember that. This is the takeaway. Self-defense is 90% physical, only 10% mental. Don't get tricked by that old saying, self-defense, the fight is 90%. It's not. The fight is it's not 90% mental. It's 90% throwing, blocking, grappling, uh, defending yourself with this, and then use, you know, so train, 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 prepare, or you'll panic, and then get your mind right. That, if you do that training every single day, your brain lives inside your body. Your brain's gonna get it. Your brain's strong enough. You don't have to worry about all that. Just learn a couple principles. Situational awareness, get in a better position, right? Find your targets, and then full contact, full commitment to every strike for self-defense. I'll see you guys in just a little bit. We got another one coming up. I wanna talk about, sorry about that, it just popped out. I wanna talk about stretching, how to move the body to improve those things, especially as you're getting older. If you wanna do martial arts for the rest of your life, how to stay well, well-being as you age, flexibility, uh, strength, and I think mobility maybe is the other one, but you know what I mean. Um, endurance, endurance, super, super, super important. So I'll see you guys just in a little bit. Thanks so much.